All right, it's another 4.45 a.m. start um, before work. Um, a bit of a session before work. Um, bloody cold, that's why I'm wearing this, as you guys can probably tell. Um, maybe you can see some of the... <laughs> it's Australian winter, but it's not, it's not like some of the Canadian winters or the European winters, but it's still pretty cold. Um, I was talking to a friend last night, and he, he and I were kind of uh, talking about how he would get into training yesterday. Um, this is a guy that's, you know, lives a sedentary lifestyle, works in an office, he's a teacher, um, he doesn't really have any physical activity in his life. We used to play basketball back in the day together. Um, skinny guy, six foot. Um, his name's George, <laughs> he's probably listening to this. Um, but we were kind of like, you know, thinking about how we would get him going, what sort of program we would you know, get him to do. Um, anyway, so, you know, he's thinking he wants to get back in shape, some sort of shape, you know, um, avoid the, the ailments of, of getting older. He's in his 30s. Um, but anyway, I kind of like on the background of my mind, I was thinking what, what I would do to a guy like that in terms of, you know, how would I train him? Um, so a few things come to mind right away. Um, I've had a couple of other friends who I've taken to the gym over the years who've kind of signed up and followed me along. And, and uh, one in particular sticks out in my mind. Um, another skinny frame, although this guy was extremely skinny and very, very weak. Um, anyway, so he kind of followed me on a chest day, back day when I was back you know, doing those bro splits. We sat on a flat bench and he couldn't do a single freaking rep with an empty barbell. Yes, he was very, very weak. Um, we were like 19, 20 at the time. Um, he couldn't do a single freaking rep. So with that in my mind, at the time I didn't think much of it. We just kind of you know, had him do other exercises, went to the machines and whatever. So yes, you can go to the gym. You can kind of do some of that assisted machine work where you can just you know, put up two kilos on the press machine and, and you just work from there. But I'm of the opinion that the best approach for a beginner, somebody that has very limited amount of athletic uh, experience or training experience, is calisthenics. The reason why I say that is because if you can't do, say, 50 push-ups, I don't think you should go to the gym. Um, if you can't do, I don't know, 15, 20 pull-ups, you shouldn't go to the gym. There's a lot you can do at home before you step into the gym. Um, number one, it saves you a lot of money because I always thought that gyms are for people that kind of that are how should I say this who are kind of more advanced um, so there's a lot you can do at home um, you can for, for instance start running you can start doing push-ups you can start doing pull-ups you can start doing crunches lunges air squats you know you can do a lot um, when you do a search on YouTube on calisthenics you will see that there are some very very advanced people there Yesterday I touched on this idea that, um, you know, some of these prison inmates are doing like three, 4,000 push-ups and they look jacked as hell. They look better than any other guy that's out in the free world um, and who's, you know, going to the gym and doing bench press and whatever. So the potential for calisthenics is really, really high. Uh, it's, it's almost endless. You could really just do that, you know, like bar stars and, and some of these, you know, uh, uh, park trainers where, where they just go to a local park and they just bust out like a million freaking reps of everything. So my opinion is very, very high of calisthenics. Um, I would recommend that to anybody who's just starting out as a beginner. Um, it is the best form of strength training I find for a beginner. Even if you just stay with it and go to an advanced level and start doing the flags and the planche and, and all this other stuff. Um, it's an end endless, endless. You can get really, really strong. Now, I know there's a lot of guys out there who haven't touched the barbell who are doing really well in terms of physique, in terms of strength and all of that. My only problem with calisthenics is, is how do you train the lower body effectively? The only thing that comes to my mind is sort of, you know, pistol squats, one-legged kind of work, lunges and all of that. You need to add some sort of progressive overload with lower body work. Um, so this is where I feel to train the lower body effectively, you, you really, really need a barbell um, after a short period of time. Whereas with pull-ups and chin-ups, you can do other stuff, like you can do, 
you know, planches, you can do, you know, single pull-ups and, and all this sort of stuff. It's easy kind of to overload. You can just kind of have a, a backpack and, and that's it. Whereas with the lower body, you tend to need a lot more weight. Like you can't carry 100 kilos to the park with you um, um, and, and, you know, have it in the backpack and, and do squats. So in terms of upper body training, I think calisthenics is phenomenal. In terms of core training, I think calisthenics is really uh, phenomenal. Lower body is where, where, I, where I think the difficulties lie with this type of training. Um, but regardless, for a beginner, you got to start somewhere and I feel like calisthenics is the best. So this is where, you know, um, calisthenics really, really shines for me. So, I mean, I didn't tell George this, but I like, I kind of kind of operating in the back of my mind as, you know, we caught up yesterday. And I wanted to tell him, look, uh, I really think the best way to approach this is some sort of calisthenics workout. Um, and in terms of frequency, you know, you can do as much as you can, but I would start once a week, see how you go, let all the kind of, uh, uh, let all the pains and, 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 and strains, I guess, that you, you would get from, from starting training from scratch, kind of, uh, you know, um, go away in the first couple of weeks and then maybe go to two days a week and three days a week and you can go from there, whatever, you know. Frequency of training is, is up for debate. You know, I do seven days a week, so it's, it's full on. Um, but you certainly don't have to do that. You can, you can get away with a lot less. Um, it'll be interesting to see what you guys have to say for that, uh, to, to that. Um, now, if you're somebody who's on the other spectrum, who's also a beginner but is a heavier build, um, obviously, if somebody like that would have a lot of trouble starting with calisthenics, you know, can't do a pull-up, can't do a push-up. What does somebody like that do? Um, I've thought about this in the past as well. How does somebody that's sort of morbidly obese train? Now, obviously, you can't just do calisthenics. You can't do push, you can't do pull-ups. So what do you do? Um, you can't even run. Somebody like that, do they need to go to the gym so they can kind of sit in one of these assisted reclined bikes or, or, or you know, they can cycle or whatever the case might be. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind is The Biggest Loser, um, a TV series. And I remember the first year around, it was really interesting to see, um, from my perspective, how, how you would go about training somebody like this. Um, I know a lot of these guys did... Um, like EMOMs, every minute on the minute kind of setups where they would do whatever, like, you know, they would, you know, do lunges or they would, um, you know, speed walks or, or I guess it depends on the body weight you're starting off with. But basically, if you can't do calisthenics, if you can't do body weight movements, like as, as basic as push-ups, you would have to kind of look elsewhere um, and do some sort of loaded carries, you know, do deadlifts, just free deadlifts, um, just shoulder presses with various different implements you can find at home really. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's a much, much more difficult uh, approach, something that George doesn't have a problem with. George can bang out 20, 30 push-ups, no worries. So for him to get started with, with calisthenics, he would progress really quickly because he's really lightweight. Um, he's somebody that has an athletic background, he's just out of shape. Basically, he, he's, he hasn't done anything for quite some time. So I think he would progress really quickly. I think George would um, get to 50 push-ups very, very quickly, especially, you know, body, body to power weight ratio. Um, you know, body weight to power ratio would be insane. Like the guy's like 70 kilos and he's six foot. Um, so for somebody like that, I think he would, he would get to 50 push-ups real quick and it would have, would have him kind of work with a barbell in a month or two. Um, but yeah, I've been thinking about calisthenics recently because I'm doing push-ups and they've been feeling really good. It's been translating to me lifting more weight on the bar. So I think calisthenics, the basics, um, is often of, uh, forgot. Um, I think a lot of people kind of get to sort of that intermediate stage, maybe advanced stage, and they forget all about the basics. I think the basics are the basics and they should never leave a program. They should always kind of have some sort of remnants of, of you know, programming um, left. So anyway, those are the thoughts that I've had in the last day or so as I've caught up with George. Um, let me get a set now. So a qu uh, quick squat session, maybe 40 odd minutes, maybe less, it's cold. Um, so I'll do just like I did yesterday, heaps of reps, um, 20 reps all the way to 60. And I'll do 80 for 10 and let's see how we go. All right, let me warm up.
The good thing about um, calisthenics is that it's so accessible. Everyone's got everything they need. Maybe a pull-up bar, but you can go to a park to get your pull-ups. Um, but everyone can do push-ups, everyone can do bodyweight stuff. Planking comes to mind, side planking. Um, I think it's the best way to, for somebody that's a complete beginner to start. Ooh. It'll be interesting to see whether some of you guys have uh, had any experience with sort of recommending or, or training somebody, you know, that's a, that's a complete beginner. Um, what would you guys have them do? Um, obviously, you know, if you're an intermediate or whatever, and you've, that's all you kind of think about, you know, your, your own progression, um, I guess you wouldn't think about, you know, beginner level stuff often throughout your day. Um, but uh, if you were to go back and when you were a beginner, you know, how would you, how would you do things? You know, would you do the exact same steps that you did back then? Um, or would you do them differently, you know, with all this experience that you have? I certainly would have um, taken calisthenics a lot more seriously. Um, I thought gains with a, with a weight were a lot quicker. Um, I had all these kind of preconceived, uh, I guess, misconceptions that, you know, if you're not doing weights, you're not getting the best out of yourself. Um, just, just think of the, the dudes that are like in the Olympics. You know the the gymnastics, the rings. Um, I don't know exactly what that is called, um, but some of those gymnasts, man, phew, talk about arms, talk about lats, talk about upper body development. You know, I know some of them do some weight training, but anyway, those dudes are very advanced. Um, you can do a lot. You can do a lot with just a pair of rings. Um, obviously, you would need to follow some program as well. You can't just do whatever, um, but the, the fact that you can train your own body without any sort of equipment is really, really cool. You go to a park, you bang out all these sets, like some of these dudes. I don't know whether you guys know, um, um, what's his name? Hannibal for King, Hannibal the King. If you type into YouTube Hannibal the King or Hannibal for King, is this uh, black fella um, from the States who is just a marvel to look at, man. Like, he is so ripped. He is a, um, I think he's a middle-aged fella, actually. Um, very nice fella. He's done um, a few videos where he's actually explained, taking people through, explained how he trains. Um, exceptional physique, exceptional strength. He does almost humanly impossible looking stuff where he's just kind of like doing planches on vertical bars where he's like holding them like, like this and it's just kind of like, yeah, phenomenal stuff. But yeah, it's all from a park. His body's from a park. Um, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So when I see a guy like that, looks in better shape than me, here I am with a squat rack and a whole bunch of weights, and he's just got his own body weight. Calisthenics is special, very special.
a few sets of 20 squats. Get your heart rate right up, your respirates right up, and you're no longer cold. <laughs> I feel like uh, high rep work is more suited for, obviously for, for winter, um, for colder seasons. Because before, before, a, uh, before this type of training, when I was doing like, you know, sets of five or whatever, you know, warm up sets, and then get to sets of threes and then doubles and, and singles, all the way to my top set, it would, uh, I'd feel cold all the way to up to like 140 kilos, really. Um, with this, the heart rate gets going <laughs> in the second set. Yeah, my quads are pumped. So I was watching um, yesterday, last night, um, Max Ada. I don't know whether you guys are aware of him. Um, he's more kind of uh, known in the Olympic weightlifting community. And uh, another fellow called Zach Talander. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. They're both kind of in the all lifting world. And they were having a chat about um, various different topics. And then I can't remember if Max was involved in this video. Um, but there was one video where Zach was talking about, you know, dudes with long femurs squatting. So, as you guys know, one of the primary accessories um, for ollie lifting is squatting. As the Bulgarians made popular, you had to squat every day, multiple times a day. That's how much value there is in this sport for squatting. So he was touching on the idea of how does a taller lifter perfect his squat with longer femurs, and shorter torso. Those are the leverages that are not beneficial for somebody that wants to squat. What generally happens with these type of lifters is there's a whole lot of forward lean um, because the femurs are so long. Um, there's a lot of forward lean and if somebody of that stature would perform a sort of 20 rep max or whatever, the fatigue wouldn't come from the quads, from the legs, it would come from the lower back because of the excessive, le uh, excessive lean. So he kind of discussed some things that you would have to do as a long femur lifter for the squat. Uh, one of the things he said that you basically need to bring up your quads. That's the number one thing you have to do to encourage your body to get in positions where your quads are uh, more likely to be used. So when the weight gets heavy, when the going gets heavy for you know high rep work, your body generally changes posture to kind of favor some of the stronger moves in your body. For you know long limbed lifters, that's usually the posterior chain. So belt squats, um, Bulgarian split squats um, was the two exercises that he recommended. Um, just to kind of bring out the quads without uh, without getting engaged posteriorly. So I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, you know, now I've never measured my legs, um, although I feel like they're a little longer. Um, like I'm not built for squatting. You know, some guys who just don't need to do anything for their training at all. Um, they just walk in and they squat and it's perfect. I've got a few colleagues at my, my, my workplace where I've kind of... Um, going around and ask different people to kind of you know go into a squat this is like no warm-up no nothing just get into a squat and basically most asians that i work with um have a perf perfect squat like a few few caucasian fellas as well and girls um but predominantly speaking the asians are masters at it and a few reasons for this um one they probably have shorter femurs in relation to the torso um, so they just built for squatting this is the way they are um you know, I always think about the Chinese weightlifters who are just gifted for this for this move. It's just phenomenal. They, they're like completely upright. Whereas, you know, Caucasians have kind of different leverages, generally speaking, and it's harder for them to to do it. So, if you are somebody of, of that position where you have a longer femur and you find it more difficult to squat, I know there's a lot of guys out there, you basically need to, number one, hit your quads as your main accessory, whatever you decide, even leg extensions, you know, split squats, um, goblet squats, uh, front squats, um, uh, belt squats, anything that can really bring out the quads, because your quads probably are asleep during 
the squatting move, uh, movement. Um, only now that I'm doing front squats for high reps do I really feel my quads. Usually I would just feel kind of like, I don't even know, like a general posterior chain fatigue. Um, a lot of the times, yes, my back would kind of give out um, when I'm doing either high rep work or high weight work. Um, I know some of you guys out there struggle with the squat, even though like you are a very, very good puller. Um, and it's probably not an accident. It's probably because you're built um, less optimally for the squat. So in order for you to progress in the squat, you need to, number one, take care of your mobility. But two, you must hit the squats. You need to hit the squats like a bodybuilder, essentially. And that's something that I recently realized as well. Um, um, bodybuilders tend to have very, very good quad development because they hit the quads with a whole lot of volume um, and they hit it with a lot of variety. Um, something that I guess all the lifters, powerlifters don't do as much. Um, bodybuilders are all physique, obviously. So they, they want to bring out body parts. They don't really care about if it's a bad leverage or whatever. They, they find a way. And I think even for me, being a minimalistic kind of at, at, my, at, uh, at the heart, um, I kind of avoid doing too much variation because I really want to just, I want the squat to really develop me. I want the deadlift to really develop me and the bench press. But sometimes you need to kind of work around certain things um, to get the best out of your body. And for me, quads have always kind of been lacking. Um, I've had periods where I've thought, no, it's my, it's my glutes, it's my quads, you know, what is it, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then when I think to, think to myself, what gives out first when I do a high reps set of anything? Um, it's only now that I'm doing front squats that I'm feeling my quads. Before this, I rarely, rarely feel my quads, which is interesting. You'd think that the quad would be a primary mover, one of the primary movers. Um, but anyway, let me hit the set of 60. This is going to be... Puffing and puffing for a while, so give me a sec. Now, if you're somebody that has long legs, and so you're kind of shitty, shitty built for the squat, you most likely have long arms. So that's great for pulling. So in all the Olympic weightlifting circles, okay, so you're pretty shit at the squat, but having long arms, you're gonna be pretty good at the pull. So you can pull really, really hard, and maybe throw that bar a little bit higher, and then so you can catch a little bit higher. Catch a little bit higher. So it's kind of like you lose some, you win some. However, 
<laughs> what if you're really unlucky and you have long arms, uh, sorry, long legs and short arms? Well, then you're pretty much screwed. So you're not going to be good at the squat. And you're not going to be good at the. You're not going to be good at the pull. Does that mean you shouldn't train at all? No, it just means that you have to really work hard, maybe more hard than the guy that's gifted in the leverage department. Um, so people of that kind of stature, <laughs> um, I know for a fact that I have shorter arms. I know that for a fact. And I also know probably that my femurs are quite long as well. So I'm kind of in that circle. I haven't really measured myself, you know, clinically to really know what's up. But I know my wingspan is less than my height, therefore I have short arms. Um, but when I was playing basketball, I didn't really care. I wanted to jump high. So I started squatting. So my squat in your eyes probably looks okay. Uh, looks pretty good. You know, I hit 195, that's not bad. Um, but I've worked at it for a long time and I've spent a lot of time doing squat every day. I know this is the longest stretch I've done, but I've done it several times in the past. And for the most part, I've trained three times a week, minimum. So I worked a, I'm yawning. I worked quite hard at it for quite some time. So I, I wouldn't say I'm a natural at the squat. And I'm definitely not a natural at the, at the pool either. And my bench isn't that great either. So I'm one of those dudes that doesn't have anything naturally gifted to him just by walking to the gym. So, but the one thing that I do have is a whole bunch of work ethic. Um, and, I, and I regard myself as pretty self-motivated, self-driven. So I feel like those are my advantages. And yeah, I'll get after it. That's it. I don't give a shit about excuses. I'm clever enough to understand um, and to look into things and to put things into perspective. But even if, though, if, if the cards are laid against me, um, it just makes it more fun. It makes it more fun to get after it. it. makes it more fun and more worthwhile when you've had to work really hard for it. So if I ever get to a 300 kilo squat, I'm really a whole lot more happy because I guess my journey was longer, harder, more against the grain than somebody that's kind of a gifted squatter. So, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting video last night. Um, but yeah, so if, if you're, if you have some disadvantages, you're gonna have to work extra hard at them. And I don't think there's anything wrong with bodybuilding um, approach to some of these lagging body parts or lagging body sections. Um, hit them hard, fuck it, hit them hard. Um, just get after it. If you're crappy at squatting, and squatting really taxes the shit out of you, but you're really great at pulling. Just do some like low intensity, kind of like low CNS costing moves. Leg extensions, do that. Do split squats, do goblet squats. Do something that doesn't absolutely murder your body. And bring up the, the main drivers off that movement and hopefully you get there, you know. Um, this is the thing, like if you could get all three moves, the big three up and put in the same amount of work in every single lift, that would be great. But oftentimes, it's too taxing. So you kind of have to pick and choose which, which move you want to progress hard and which move you just want to maintain. Um, it's great if you get all three up at the same time. But if you want to get through a plateau, if you want to break through like a threshold, the chances are you're probably going to have to have something on the back burner for a little bit. For me, it's the deadlift at the moment. I'm really, really pushing the squat. I'm really trying to work out, trying to kind of uh, feel out what's going to work, what isn't going to work. Um, so yeah, um, those are my thoughts on that. Um, I guess you can call it that I'm becoming more um, happy with the idea of accessory movements. Whereas before it was just purely hit the squat. Um, I think I've reached a stage where I'm like, no, no, I think I need something extra on top to really bring out the squat.
Whew. So I've been doing this, this routine for three or four days now in a row where I've kind of just done a bit more volume in the warm-ups. Um, I'm not really that fatigued. I don't have DOMS, I don't have anything. I feel like I could do this every day. Now, with this thing, you're probably gonna have a, a weaker top end, so you're not gonna be able to hit, uh, hit the same, um, you know, training max every day when you do this. But maybe that's a good thing. You know, it's kind of almost like a deload in terms of heavy weight. Um, just getting a whole bunch of work at the bottom reps. It's actually quite fun. I'm finding it fun. I'm finding it a lot less uh, stressful because I don't have to worry about putting a heavy ass weight on me. I just come in and fiddle around with a bit of, a bit of uh, lighter weight, get a bit of a pump on and yeah, get out of here. It's going well. Um, if I want to get to acclimatize to you know, heavier reps, I'll start you know, putting back in some of the heavier stuff as well. Um, but yeah, I just kind of uh, tip it all around new kind of regimes, kind of uh, regiments, because um, yeah, just trying to ease into it. Make it a bit more palatable, I guess. Less, less shocking to the system. How many minutes are we in? 35. Get to the heaviest stuff now. 120. Can you guys see that? It's quite cold today. I never, I never really saw how much it was. I think it was five degrees last night, something like that. Six degrees. Now that I've had the home gym for a while, I couldn't imagine going into a, a gym, like air conditioned gym, and just put up with the air conditioning and the recycled air. It's just different, man, when you're like, when you're fresh air, it's just the best. You can walk out whenever. Just a different feel, less humidity. I remember not too long ago, I went to the gym. Oh, that's shit feeling, man, I hated it. This is so much more enjoyable for me, so much.
All right, 140 now. This is gonna be the decider whether I go up or I stay where I, at 140. I don't know whether you guys have the same kind of, um, I know it's really early in the morning, but some days when I'm training, it could be middle of the day, if I'm doing kind of like, you know, heavy, heavy work or whatever the case might be, I would start yawning in the middle of the set. It's really weird. Like, it's really, really weird. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, oh, dude, it's 5.30 in the morning, 5.20 in the morning. Um, but it happens to me sometimes, like, middle of the day. Like, I'm, I'm, work, I'm training, I'm working hard, and then all of a sudden I'll start yawning. It's really weird how that is. I wonder if you guys experience that sort of stuff. It's like I'm not sitting around, my heart rate's up, and then a yawn comes out of nowhere. <laughs> it's really weird. Shoulders really causing me trouble when I do this. <sighs> Alright, 140 call of the day there. Um, comment in the section below, um, in the comment section, what you guys think about the whole you know beginner beginner profile, what you guys recommend, what you guys think should happen. Would you get straight into a barbell work? Um, interesting. I guess it depends on the on the goals of the trainee. Uh, but yeah. If, if you can be bothered, comment down below how you would approach training somebody that's completely rookie. Anyway, guys, catch you in the next one.